Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R730XD. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on drives. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R730XD. Do us a favor if you find this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, so as we said, we're going to uh, focus on drives in this video. Uh, we'll touch base on hard drives and solid state drives. Uh, so really, let's just uh, hop into it. So uh, there are three types of drives that the R730XD can accept, not including NVMe, which we're going to have um, actually in the next video after this in the series will be dedicated to NVMe, but as far as your standard drives, there's going to be SAS, SATA, and solid state drives. Um, and the uh, 730XD large form factor and small form factor will both uh, take all three of those drives. Uh, so as far as the speeds are concerned, SAS can take 10K and 15K, SATA can uh, take 7.2K, and technically there's some other ones, uh, you can use some of the slower ones, like the, uh, there's those uh, kind of oddball ones like the 5.9, and uh, some of that stuff will work. Uh, I don't recommend it, but generally speaking for SATA you're going to get 7.2K. Um, and then for the solid state drives, you can use uh, 3 gigabit per second, uh, 6 gigabit per second, or 12 gigabit per second. And that's your options on the speed side for all three of the types of drives. Uh, as far as the sizes are concerned, well, that depends on if you're using the small form factor or the large form factor. So let's start with the small form factor. So for the small form factor, the SAS can get, according to Dell, uh, 2.4 terabytes. Um, we've played around with it. Um, we haven't actually put anything larger in there, so I'd actually be curious to hear if somebody uh, has installed higher drives, so uh, drop a comment down below. For SATA, it's 2 terabytes, and for the solid state drives, it's 7.68 terabytes, okay? As far as the large form factor is concerned, uh, we're going to give you uh, kind of two scenarios. According to what Dell says, the highest you can do for SAS is 12 terabytes, for SATA, 12 terabytes, and then for solid state drive, 7.68 terabytes. Now, we've played around with it a little bit, um, and we have installed 14 terabytes uh, on the SAS side, and they do work fine. Um, and we have put 12 terabytes in on the SAS side, and they work fine, and then 7.68 terabytes um, on the solid state st uh, drive side. But again, uh, I'm sure there's some people at home that have uh, put in larger drives. I'd be really curious to hear if you dropped in you know, a 16 terabyte or 18 terabyte. Uh, please let us know if it uh, works. We'd be very interested to hear. Um, and that is, uh, for the most part, uh, the sizes and the different speeds, and those are the options that you have on the drive side. So now uh, what I'd like to do is show you uh, how to physically install them, which is very simple because this is a hot swap drive, uh, so it just pops in and out. But nonetheless, I want to show you how easy it is to do that, and then we're going to run a couple of tests, and we're going to show you how to do uh, Dell Diagnostics, which will test the drives plus a whole bunch of other components for that matter, and how to do uh, a, a tool called HD Sentinel that will show you power on hours uh, and health scores and some other stuff. Uh, so that way you can try it two different ways just to make sure that you have good drives. So when you're buying drives, you know you're working with a reputable, vin reputable vineyard vendor such as uh, Cloud Ninja. So, all right, well, let's get rolling. Not a ton to show you here on the rear kit, but I did want to just show it because it is an important uh, feature that does change how many PCIe slots you have compared to the R730, for instance. But um, it's pretty cool because you can put two small form factors in the back. Uh, this is great for tossing in some SSDs, some boot drives, something to this effect. Uh, it's a whole kit as far as the uh, the board itself, all the cables. So it, it is not something that you just normally get. On our site, you can add it in as an extra option uh, when you're building out your 730XD. But this is a great option for being able to add in uh, two additional drive. So I just did want to touch on that because I felt like this was an important feature for the 730XD. Alright, so now we're going to show you how to uh, remove a drive and install it again. This is going to be the uh, one of the easier upgrades. Um, so let's just say this first one went bad and we needed to remove it. Um, yes, you can remove it while the machine is still on, which is why it's called a hot swap. So literally just going to push this little circle button, the tab is going to pop open, and you're going to pull it out. Uh, very, very simple to remove and to install. So for the next one, you're just going to want to have uh, the bracket open, slide it in, and it just pops right in. Click it down. I'll do it again just to show you how easy it is. Uh, I mean, installing drives is uh, super fast for hot swap, so uh, it's just that easy. Um, so if you need to install new ones, just know that uh, you don't need to be a tech to do it. <laughs> All right, uh, so now we'll go ahead and we'll show you how to do uh, Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. All right, we're going to start by showing you how to uh, run Dell Diagnostics. Um, and technically, uh, with Dell Diagnostics, it's going to test more than just your hard drives. It's really going to test all the components in your system. But this would be how we would recommend testing the hard drives. And yes, it will take some time, so we will fast forward through chunks of this here. So uh, really, it's uh, very simple. You're going to um, basically on the boot up screen when you start. 
you're going to hit F10 and this is going to take you to your life cycle controller. When you get to the life cycle controller, you're going to select hardware diagnostics. When you select hardware diagnostics, it's going to take you to another screen here. You're going to select run hardware diagnostics. Fairly simple, right? After you select run hardware diagnostics, it's going to give you the option here. It's going to tell you it's going to take several minutes. Sit, click yes to continue. And after you uh, click yes, it is going to take uh, a bit of time to do all this. The nice thing too is uh, they will show you the progress as it goes. It'll show you everything from, you know, the fans and the memory and uh, the hard drives and a whole bunch of other stuff in here but specifically on the, in this in this case what we're going to be looking for is the hard drives and so we're going to go ahead and uh, fast forward right here because it's going to take a little bit of time all right so you can see um the you know the tests start automatically as soon as you um you click it it's really an easy process as a whole it's just gonna you know run and run and run it and it's gonna take some time uh, in our case it took us about 10 to 12 minutes for it to uh, to fully test everything here. Uh, once the test is complete, you're going to get green that's going to pop up. You know, in this case, it's telling us that there was failures. Check out the results. We click yes, continue testing. It's done. Click OK. You can go into the results, and in the results tab, it'll have all the different hardware. On the left side, it also will show you a green check versus a, a red X. Uh, you can see that all the hard drives passed, uh, all the other stuff, backplane, video card, you know, all the fans were a good processor, memory, etc. Everything's fine on a hardware level. And you can scroll to the top of that results area, and you will see all the, um, the details here on the uh, the individual drives and uh, which slots they're in so uh, relatively easy overall you know it, it will take some time to run it but it, you know realistically it's not you know that much time um, and making sure that your system is in good working order it's important so now we're going to show you how to do um, HDD Sentinel uh, which I get is not Dell but I feel like it's really good for uh, checking on um, power on hours uh, health scores and some of this kind of stuff for your drives so uh, we will continue with that next all right, so now we've got Hard Disk Sentinel pulled up, and this is uh, relatively simple as well. You just need to make sure you, you know, download the program. What we actually do is we have a, um, a separate server hooked up to a bunch of storage arrays so that we can test in bulk, but you just basically need to make sure you have it hooked up. When you pop in drives, um, they're going to auto-populate, and you'll start seeing them pop up on the left. So we're starting off with two in there, but we're going to go ahead and toss two more in as we go. And, and like I said, it's, it's relatively simple. You pop them in, they auto-populate up. Um, you'll see them on the left. You can click on them, and you'll see you know, the health score. Uh, you'll see if it's running hot, if there's too much temperature on there. When you click on them, uh, you can see the power on time in the middle, how much estimated lifetime is left. Um, there's a lot of cool features here. It's a good way to just to make sure that you have a healthy drive because obviously if you're you know, running uh, somebody's data or your own data, you want to make sure that it's protected and not in a drive that uh, is going to fail in the near future. So this is a, a nifty way to test. And also if you're you know, just buying drives from people you don't know um, and you want to make sure you're working with a reputable vendor, this is a great way to physically just test them. So um, you can see we just popped in the 500 gig on another 500 gig and they're popping up on the left and it's just you know simple as just a hot swap or plugging it in and then you can click on it and see um you know how, how long it's been on so this one's been on for you know 2200 days 2600 days but anyhow uh, appreciate you stopping by to learn a little bit more about how to test your hard drives um, if you're looking for any hard drive upgrades uh, do us a favor and email us at sales at cloud ninja.com at sales at cloud ninja.com or if you're just looking for a custom built r730 xd uh, we'd love to help you out sales at cloud ninja.com that's sales at cloud, cloud ninja.com thanks for stopping by take care guys